House of Representatives to enact laws to compel companies to adhere to legislative guidelines. Correspondent highlights the state of national minimum wage bill in the National Assembly. Plus, Edo State 8 Assembly in focus. The journey so far. Good evening and welcome to NTA Parliamentary News. I am Ene Ojonuba. The House of Representatives Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility says it is enacting laws to sanction companies who fail to comply with legislative guidelines. The committee, during a public hearing on the bill seeking regulation of corporate social responsibility in Nigeria and other related matters, gave last warning to some communication companies to honor its invitation or face the warrant of arrest. National Assembly correspondent Joshua Ogunjide stands by for details. The bill seeks to provide legal status and guidelines to corporate responsibility for better coordination and regulation. This will ensure a baseline for social responsibility while allowing companies to deliver their efforts to their specific circumstances, create a robust regulatory framework. This will include provisions for monitoring, reporting, and enforcement, ensuring accountability and transparency in CSR the committee frowns at the attitude of agencies like National Communications Commissioner NCC, MTN, along Hetel, alleging that they have several times ignored the invitation of the committee and the necessity to invoke its powers by issuing a warrant of arrest. Citing Section 89, Subsection 8 of the Constitution, the chairman of the committee emphasized the exigency of invoking its powers. However, arrest as a punitive measure never went down well with some firms represented at the hearing. We believe this penalty is too stringent. More so, this raises concerns regarding its compatibility with constitutional rights and freedoms, particularly those safeguarding property and economic liberties of citizens. There are two issues. We have corporate social responsibility and we have social contract with government. If you are talking, the, the social contract is already addressing the other issues because you want to talk about saying that you need a lot of uh, money to take care of this. What about the social contract? That is the taxes that we are already paying. We have the host community development trust fund, which is, which is directly CSR. We have the Niger Delta Development Commission, which is also directly CSR, the education tax, the human capacity development is fall squarely under um, CSR. In line with the president's mandate to reduce the cost of governance, we recommend that the principles and reference points could be strengthened and introduced to the Companies and Allied Matters Act, which will be monitored by CAC in collaboration with other MDAs. We want to be corporately, socially responsible. If you are providing uh, in doing investments, providing services, projects in the communities. Let us know what you're doing. All we want to do is to know what you're doing. Earlier, at the opening formalities, the speaker, Tajuddin Habas, represented by the House leader, Professor Julius Hilfberry, aims that the success of the legislative process is dependent on public response and contribution to the public hearing. From the National Assembly, Joshua Wachley, NT News. The Director General of National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, NILS, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, has extended his best wishes to the Chief of Staff of the President, Femi Gwajabia Mila, on his 62nd birthday. In a statement, the DG praised Gwajabia Mila's steadfast commitment to advancing Nigeria's legislative processes and democratic governance, describing it as both exemplary and inspiring. He highlighted the visionary leadership and relentless dedication of Bajabi Amila, the immediate past alternate chairman of NILT's governing council, 
in promoting legislative excellence, as he also noted that Gwajabi and Miller's contributions have significantly strengthened Nigeria's democracy and improved the nation. The DG acknowledged his efforts during his tenure in the National Assembly to enhance legislative transparency, accountability, and inclusiveness are commendable and have set a high standard for public service as well as demonstrated a deep understanding of the needs and aspirations of the Nigerian people. The DG acknowledged his efforts during his tenure in the National Assembly to enhance legislative transparency, accountability, and inclusiveness are commendable and have set a high standard for public service as well as demonstrated a deep understanding of the needs and aspirations of the Nigerian people. He noted that under the leadership of Gwajabi Amila, the House of Representatives made remarkable progress in enacting laws that foster socio-economic development, safeguard human rights, and promote good governance. The DG prayed that the Almighty God grant him many more fruitful years and continued good health. One of the beauties of separation of powers is the delineation of functions for the organs of government. This, however, is not mutually exclusive as there are areas of convergence for these institutions of government. Bringing on board a new national minimum wage is one of such functions that involves both the executive and the legislature. In the report, Ignatius Unko highlights the stages of national minimum wage bill in the National Assembly. Friday, 7th of June, 2024, was the day Nigerian workers waited with bated breath in anticipation of a new minimum wage. The announcement was to come from the Presidential Tripartite Committee deliberating on the new wage. Eventually, at about 9.30 that night, the announcement was made. I have agreed on a figure, 62,000. 10th of June, 2024, the report of the committee was submitted to the President for further action. At this point, the recommendation of the committee is expected to be drafted into a bill and forwarded to the National Assembly as an executive bill. Now, the letters are now taken to the two chambers. Uh, the communications are directly addressed to Senate President and the Speaker of the House. Now, both chambers will now read the content of the communication from the Office of the President to the hearing of all members at plenary. Now, that constitutes the first reading of the, of, the, of, the, of the bill. After first reading, it will go for a second reading, where it will be debated extensively in both chambers of the National Assembly and referred to the appropriate committee for further legislative scrutiny and input through public hearing. These inputs will be collated to form part of the report the committee will present on the floor at plenary. This is where the final amendments are made. The legislators may decide to pass the exact amount submitted by the president, increase or decrease it. Our law, our powers give us the right to either increase or reduce. Uh, the processes that brought about this bill was almost a public hearing. Uh, the sitting of the organized labor, uh, the private sector, government with the f with with with, with and, and, and and then government and then later on the 37 tripartite committee is almost like a public hearing once the report has been adopted the bill separately passes third reading at both chambers if there are differences a conference committee is constituted to harmonize the discrepancies and the bill is forwarded to the president for assent it's a process that can be abridged and done within one or two days. The National Assembly could make it 200,000 and they have, or more, if they have the right to do that. All the president would do at, is to veto the bill. That is to refuse to give assent to the bill. Uh, if the president so refuses to give assent, to give his assent to sign the bill, uh, to become an act, uh, the National Assembly could uh, follow the, its process to override, accept or override the presidential veto. 
Once the National Minimum Wage Bill receives presidential assent, it becomes binding on all employers of labor in both the public and private sectors. This is why these stakeholders were represented in the Tripartite Committee. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. As Nigerians are waiting for an acceptable new national minimum wage, to discuss this and the roles of the legislature, with me in the studio is the Director General, Flag Foundation of Nigeria, Chris Aguirre. You are welcome to the news. Thank you very much. Good to be here. What should be the role of the legislature in providing a platform for dialogue and negotiation between government and labor to reach a mutually accepted wage by both public and the private sector? Well, the role of the National Assembly fundamentally is to make laws. Well, as an organ of government, they oftentimes intervene where there is issues between labor and, and the government, because they are also part of government. But uh, fundamentally, when the bill for a new minimum wage act is presented, there is to take all necessary steps and ensure that the, the, the act is passed, the bill is passed into law, so that uh, we can move forward. Other than, um, but I, before a bill is presented, my view is this, that there should be some mutual understanding and agreement with organized labor. So that once the bill is presented before the National Assembly, it goes on and on and become a law, other than you know, a front and back movement. From what I am seeing in the news, uh, Labour appear not to have uh, purely agreed not to be in the same at uh, the same page with the government, and uh, we also saw that uh, it was stepped down. The the the, the bill in the making is, was stepped down before the Federal Executive Council by Mr. President, who wants to do further consultation. Yes, consultation in that regard, the National Assembly can be involved with labor itself. So they come be at the same page before presenting at that. But in terms of rule of the National Assembly, basically is to, once the bill is presented, all the first reading, second reading, public hearing uh, as required by law, then third reading passed into law, signed, assented by the Mr. President. So we, we uh, go past that one and move forward. In this regard, how will the lawmakers pass legislation that will establish a fair and reasonable minimum wage, indexing it to inflation and ensuring regular review? Yeah, ordinarily, I would have said, look, the, the Labor Act should be, its lifetime should be extended to 10 years. But in this case of volatile uncertainties in the young economies, growing economies, turbulent economies like ours, Let's stick at five years review. But that is another thing. Before even the bill is presented now, government and all stakeholders must take note of the current inflationary uh, uh, um, um, measures that will be able to cushion the effects as we go forward. Because for now, our economy is still in a volatile stage. Nobody knows what will happen in the next two years, next three years, with the depreciation of the Naira. What are the steps to straighten the Naira? What are the steps to take, get the, the uh, refineries working? So that there can be some kind of semblance of stability. If the situation is too volatile, and you pass, say, for instance, uh, labor is not agreeing to 62,000, that's an open secret. Some are advocating for 100,000. Assuming it is hundred thousand, and by the next two years you cannot buy a bag of rice for hundred thousand, they will agitate again. But God forbid that we go right, that route. Most important thing is the issues of governance and leadership. Things are like this because, for example, in terms of food, we are not able to produce enough food to feed ourselves. The manpower is there. The land is there just to provide the necessary environment, the necessary enabling environment for farmers to go and farm. And so without taking these steps, whatever negotiation about labor and labor wage, you find that over time it may not make, make sense. So it is a complex thing, but we must all come together and then address it in a way that it is our thing. It's, not, it's no longer be discussed issues of, of labor 
and, and the nation should no longer be discussed in isolation. Governments must engage the people, citizenship engagement, so that all hands will come on board. We are able to know, look, this is the current state of affairs in our country. And so uh, everybody comes together to address it and then overcome it, because we must overcome. And it is our duty to overcome. And we have no better option than to overcome these challenges, or we perish. But when you isolate labor, as if, as you know, whatever labor is asking for now is given to them. Nigeria's problem is over. No, that says emotion, or that set of, of uh, you know, challenges that follow up. So we, 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 I expect the government to, uh, to, to put itself together and, and show a direction. For now, I'm, I'm, I doubt if Nigerians actually know the direction that we're headed to. Government policies, economic policies, how are they trickling down the states and local governments? How are the people aware of it? Governors, with all this too much money in their, 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 their disposal, what is happening in the states? The pressure at the center here, yeah, because is isn't much is happening in the states. That the governors are built one or two roads, it becomes that, uh, you know, we have arrived after one year. No, for me, the celebrations by different governors and all the issues of uh, commissions, of uh, uh, roads and all that, it, it, it's, yes, we need roads, quite all right, but the people are hungry. So let there be, I've had some state governments now talking about airports, talking about building airports. At this point, there are about two states now, one in the north, one in the south, is talking about building airports. Of what use is airport when the people cannot even feed, when the people cannot build, feel secure? Such money should be, should be properly channeled to issues of um, uh, uh, the borders on our existence. Food, for instance, security, for instance. The healthcare, for instance, education, for instance, these are the primary um, things that the people need to live. And without that, there will continue the co friction, I mean, friction and disagreement will continue to be there. Government must engage the people. What is your call on the need to review the minimum wage act from five years to go with present economic realities? Yeah, along the line, I mentioned it, you know, but then the issue is this. For now, let us stick at five years. Let us stick at five years because the vitality in our economy is, uh, we, we don't even know what to expect in the next two years. We don't know what to expect in the next three years as it is today. So if we, the, the review, let it be for another five years. Which if it becomes necessary, even before five years, that government intervenes according to the, in, uh, in line with the realities where we find ourselves, the must, government must not shy away to, from intervening. At the same time, both the labor and the government and all Nigerians, my message is this. This is an unusual time in Nigeria's social, political, and economic historical evolution. Nigeria had never found itself in this kind of position we are now, economically. Security-wise, national unity, you know, national cohesion. We, we, we just have to, there must be a serious consensus coming together so that we can address our problems as they confront us. Because no other set of human beings from any other part of the world will come to solve Nigeria's problems other than Nigerians. The leadership must show the way, and the people must follow the leadership. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's time now to pause for some messages. The news continues with stories from the state assemblies shortly. Are you looking for a short channel to make your business, goods and services go viral? Look no further as NTA Parliament is your short channel. Take advantage of our wider reach and advertise your products and services on NTA Parliament DSTV channel 370, Go TV channel 126, Star Times channel 306, and free TV channel 706. For more inquiries, contact the marketing department, NTA Parliament, NTA Headquarters, Area 11, Gerke Abuja, or call these numbers 080-383-40464 or 080-770-78055. NTA Parliament, strengthening Nigeria's democracy. You are watching NTA Parliamentary News, reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. 
Thank you for staying with us. Moving forward on democratic governance from state assemblies. The Edo State 8 Assembly has surpassed its targets, legislative achievements, one year after its inauguration. The Speaker Blessing, Agbe Bagu, stated this while briefing the media on the milestone recorded and the projection for the future of the state legislature. Obehi Otobo Apresei reports. The Speaker, flanked by other lawmakers, expressed his satisfaction with the progress made so far, which includes the passage of 16 people-oriented bills, resolutions that border on addressing insecurity, road rehabilitation, and poor power supply, taking into consideration the peculiarities in the state. In the last one year, the Eighth Assembly has to its credit over 44 resolutions, which has helped the House to clearly establish a clear policy trust. The resolution of the House on a motion calling on the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, and the controller, Federal Ministry of Works, to render some palliative on the multiple failed portion on all federal roads. During the period under review, as part of the House effort to ensure people oriented position, has passed 16 bills. The bill have different impacts on the people of the states. A special service had earlier held at the hallow chambers where the speaker led other lawmakers and staff of the assembly to thank God for the peace and unity in the house despite the challenges. <laughs> 24 lawmakers were inaugurated on the 16th of June 2023 as the 8th assembly. However, Following the suspension of three lawmakers, the Eighth Assembly now consists of 21 lawmakers. In Benin, Obehi Otoba Presai, NTA News. Sokoto State House of Assembly says no right-thinking person would contemplate the dethronement of the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar. The legislature stated that it only received a bill that contains the appointments of district heads and villages of the Sultanate Council. Correspondent Nuruddin Abdullahi Adili has more on the development. Recently, there were reports, particularly on the social media, that Sokoto State Government has sent a bill that will reduce some powers of the Sultanate Council and dethrone the Sultan of Sokoto. Well, debunking the rumor, the Sokoto State House of Assembly, in its preliminary, explained that the general public, NGOs, and stakeholders will be invited to contribute during the public hearing on the bill before it is passage by the Assembly. Members wondered why the bill attracted negative comment while it is only about the appointment of district heads, village heads, and members of the Sultanate Council, which has no connection with the detriment of the Sultan, who has high regard in the state and country at large. This is not the first time that the House is amending the bill, as it was amended during the first tenure of former governor at Tahiru Dalhatu Bafara and that of Aliyu Maga Takarda Wamoko in 2008. Since the inception of this administration, you are aware, you can see all the communications and everything that is being done by this government is being done under the advice of his eminence the sultan. So why should this government dethrone his eminence the sultan of Sokoto? What has he done? Has there been any, any query issued to him? Has there been any other negative uh, 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 information that is being, is, is, is going around the, the, between the government and the sultan of the council? There is nothing like that. Similarly, the three executive bills have passed first and second reading on the floor of the House. The first bill is on the amendment of Sokoto State Local Government Law 2018 that adds one year to tenure of local government council from two years to three years. The second bill is for a law to repeal Sokoto State Prohibition of Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Law Number 1 of the 2021 and enact the prohibition of discrimination against persons with disability and for matter connected to that. Well, the third bill is for a law to repeal Sokoto State Tenancy Control and Safety of Persons Commission Law Number 16 of the 2019 and provide 
for the establishment of stock to set tenancy control and safety of person, agency, and for matters connected therewith. After the legislative process, the deputy speaker who presided over the sitting announced the House unanimous result to forward the bill to relevant committees for scrutiny. Each committee giving 10 days to report back to the House. From the Sakoto State House of Assembly, Nuruddin Abdullah Adili, NTA News. Akwaibom State House of Assembly is to partner the Association of Nigerian Private Medical Practitioners in Akwaibom State for effective health care delivery and services in the state. This resonated at the meeting with Chairman House Committee on Health and Association of Private Medical Practitioners at the Assembly Complex, Uyo. Correspondent Nsikak Okum reports. The meeting is sequel to a motion on the bad attitude and poor handling of patients in some private hospitals in the state. The chairman of the House Committee on Health, a member representing Ibionibum State constituency, Moses Essien, while raising concern about the standard of hospital facilities, competence of their workforce, attitude of staff towards patients, activities of quack says that, the healthcare of Akwaibom people is their major concern and hospital owners should rise to their responsibilities. He, however, assured the Association of the Eight Assembly's readiness to make relevant laws that would find solutions to some of the challenges in the hospitals. As private medical practitioners, let us collectively join hands to support the present administration in its case to promote the health sector of the state. And not to, having gotten the nursing training, they will leave the country for better remunerations. If we continue to do like this, how do we develop our health sector? We must try the best we can to pocket our, put our hands in our share and say, let us build our own health sector. The state chairman of the Private Medical Practitioners Association of Kwaibom State, Dr. Emmanuel Akpanabo, commended the lawmakers for having the interests of Kwaibom people at heart and for considering to partner with the association for effective healthcare delivery while listing some of their challenges to include multiple taxation, high electricity tariff, the search for greener pastures, outside Nigeria, among others. Even which you are working for, very soon it will come to us. And if we had employed 30 people, it's going to shrink to maybe 10, so that we can, the little revenue we have, we pay them. So when all these things are put in the table, the House Committee, members of the House, and other principal stakeholders will contribute ideas how we can move forward. Zika Okon, NTN News. That is the size of our bulletin at this time. You can follow our social media handles showing on your screen for more updates. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening. I am Ene Ojanuba.